You pull around one hill and you're, you're at the top of the hill, so you're looking down on it. And it is this, the most gorgeous aquamarine turquoise yeah. color water. It looks so beautiful, like there's no reason to pass this one. <laughs> and there are two restaurants there on the sand. There were sailboats in the water. There's plenty of other RVs parked right on the beach. There's little cabanas, yachties, the people who were staying out on their sailboats, they would dinghy into shore. And it was just such a special area. Pretty it's neat. hard to explain, but it was, it was so cool. With this challenging terrain in Baja, it would have been real nice to have a set of snap pads. We do have some now, and they make a huge difference for places like right here where we're on very uneven terrain. It gives us a larger footprint, and in our case, the prime snap pads are over three times larger than the original jack size. Consider these your RV's flip-flops from Mexico, or basically anywhere you wouldn't want to walk barefoot, that's where you need these snap pads. Um, but they're also eco-friendly. They're made out of recycled tires, which is awesome, but that way you can just set it and forget it. We spent the past week landlocked in central Baja, Mexico, and now we're finally nearing the coast. But first, we had one last massive descent down through Cuesta del Inferno, which translates into the highway to hell. Reaching the bottom with everything intact, we rolled into Santa Rosalia, next to the Sea of Cortez. Is that where that super cool train station was? Mm -hmm. We'll have to go back and explore that. Because it's a big town, though, we'd want to make sure ahead of time we had a, a good, safe place to park the RV at. Yes. It's not a town that you can easily turn around in, so you need to know where you're going. <laughs> this also ended up being on a Sunday. In Baja, there's a lot of hardworking people, and they, they on Sunday, it's a day of rest, and it's a day to go out in the town and get groceries, go to church, and so we ended up in this big town on a Sunday. There was road construction. Which is kind of an oxymoron. It must have been an emergency for there to be all this road construction on a Sunday, but mass amounts of people who aren't normally or who weren't working, coupled with some ridiculous road construction. Most of the roads that our navigation or GPS wanted to take us down were blocked off. So we were literally just following <laughs> traffic blindly. Yeah, and it worked out. Uh, we just kind of followed the big semi trucks because we knew that they were going to be going most likely down the same road we were going. Again, not a great idea, but. <laughs> <laughs> there are some really neat, like old factories and some, some marinas that look pretty cool. Definitely worth stopping and checking out if you have the time. Yep. And then we drove through Mulahe. Oh. I guess it's about an hour or so south of Santa Rosalie. It might be two hours, but it's, it's just a little ways south of there. And uh, Mulahe is a much smaller town. So, so you've been driving through the desert, lots of dry, dusty desert with some cacti here and there. Mm. And all of a sudden, boom, you hit Mulahe and there's some greenery. And then this river, it's full of these big palm trees and this greenery and this nice, nice water. And Pula something inside. out of a movie. I don't know, it was so pretty. It was pretty cool, yeah. We wanted to stop in Mulahe, but again, when we're driving this big RV and we're towing our truck, we don't want to get stuck somewhere where we have to turn around. So there weren't any good pull-offs that we saw there in Mulahe. So we kept on going and it was what, maybe a half hour later, we popped out far. on the Bahia Conception. This is our first time seeing yeah. Bahia Conception. And talk about breathtaking. I mean, there's, there's still a good number of hills when you're pulling into Bahia Conception. So you are just seeing hill after hill of, of brown. I mean, it's not, you're not surrounded by palm trees or any sort of greenery. I don't, I don't even remember a cactus, but you just, you pull around one hill and you're, you're at the top of the hill. So you're looking down on it. And it is this, the most gorgeous aquamarine turquoise yeah. color water. As you make that turn and all <laughs> of a sudden the, the bay reveals itself. Yeah. And it's just a stark contrasting color to this brown, 
desert landscape all of a sudden is, is amazing blue water yeah. pops out. Yeah. And Bahia Conception, there's probably more than a dozen or more different places you can camp at mm -hmm. along the bay. And we had never been, we didn't know which one well, to go to. Well, there's multiple bays. There's Playa Coyote yeah. and, and, uh, and anyways, we ended up pulling the very first one because <laughs> couldn't help it. it looked so beautiful. Like there's no reason to pass this one. <laughs> And it, and it ended up being, I'll, I'll put the name of it here down below, uh, the one we pulled into. Playa Santa Speck. Oh, there you go. So the first bay that you'll come to and the one that we stopped at was Playa Santa Speck. And there are two restaurants there on the sand. There were sailboats in the water. There's plenty of other RVs parked right on the beach. There's little cabanas. Yeah, it was a very oh my gosh. cool setting. Uh, for those of you that also have big rigs, this is a very good place for big rigs. Not mm -hmm. all of the beaches are big rig accessible. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Santa Spack was one of the places. And like I said, we, we, this is the very first one. We thought about looking around to try to find like, the best one. Like, it, it's, it doesn't get much better than this. Yeah. So we just pulled off. And uh, yeah, we got off the highway, a little bumpy road going down. And it's just all this amazing hard pack sand. Yeah. That, you know, typically at a beach, you have to worry about your tire spinning and getting stuck. But the beach there, just like, like it was an RVer's dream. I yeah, guess. It, it absolutely is. They, they will even bring you in um, fresh water to pump into your tanks. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, there's two restaurants there. One of them offered Wi-Fi. One of them had live music, which you'll, you'll see video of because we, we went there later on. Um, Yachty's, the, 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 People who were staying out on their sailboats, they would dinghy into shore, and it was just such a special area. Pretty it's neat. hard to explain, but it was it was so cool. Yeah, it was a cool spot for everybody, for RVers and for sailboaters. Uh, Bihi Conception is this nice big bay area. Many of the sailboaters like to go there because it's just nice calm water. It's very yeah. easy, cruisy sailing, and plenty of nice spots to, to anchor. And uh, yeah, so we had this nice mix of all these different travelers. Typically with an RV, we ended up, you know, with hanging out with other RVers. And this was a cool mix to add some, some sailors into the mix, mm -hmm. some boaters, you know. And the water, you know, the water's pretty shallow, pretty far out. So mm -hmm. Nutmeg could walk around in there. Tucker, he's only a few months old. We could bring him in there, which, by the way, I am so excited to get him there now. He's mm -hmm. going to be just over three, three and a half. Tucker is going to tear up that water. He's going to have so much fun out there. And we won't have to worry as much because it's clear water, it's yeah. shallow. So eating in Mexico, um, I didn't find it to be scary or threatening or nerve wracking like I have, say, like when we were in El Salvador. Um, a lot of the dishes that we found at restaurants in Baja, they're, they're pretty familiar. I mean, it's not going to be American style Mexican food, but they're going to have tacos, they're going to have fajitas, most things that you'd be familiar with. And if you have any questions, they were always so accommodating and like willing to explain what the, what the dish was. And what a cool atmosphere because like it's, you know, as the sun goes down over Bahia Conception, it's, that in itself is a sight to be, to be seen. You're having a nice cold margarita or whatever yeah, was, your drink I, of choice is. I was going to say, every restaurant will have a margarita. So if nothing else, <laughs> you can drink your dinner. <laughs> but before the restaurant, we actually made our own margaritas at the RV. You're know, looking out over the water, uh, really the, the window right behind the camera here. We're looking out of the bay and it just, just was incredible. What an incredible place. And then like, if it couldn't get any better than that, we would go over to the restaurant, the little cantina for dinner. Nothing happens fast there, you know? So, so you gotta- You're forced to slow down and just like take in the atmosphere and watch the musicians while they're setting up or playing and kind of socialize because yeah, you're not, you're not gonna get your meal in 10 minutes. people would come up oh my gosh how old is he he's so cute like we can't believe you brought a baby to Mexico he's also a bond headed little boy <laughs> but oh my gosh if if the waitress and the chef and the musician all were not just fawning over Tucker at this restaurant in Bahia Conception I mean we almost had to like drag him back <laughs> they, they were just handing him off everyone was just loving on him and dancing with him 
he had a great time, we had a great time, and this is definitely a spot that if you're going to Baja, you want to make sure and budget some time. Yes. Stop off at any of these beaches along this Bahia is, Conception are going to be good. This is a do not pass go. Like, you have to go there. Even if you're not a beach person, just go and watch a sunset. Just stay for a night because it will be gorgeous. Yeah. And then and, you can move on. And really, you can't not see it. If you're going driving south through Baja down to the bottom, you're going to pass right by here. Yeah. We didn't know it yet, but we we're about to go off grid for a week plus in the desert of Mexico. In the next video, we head south towards Loreto, and then, of course, us being us, veer off onto a dirt road only known really by a handful of surfers who make it down there to try and catch some waves. Yeah, the signs like this, you can't even tell it's a sign. 10 kilometers of crazy bumpy road all the way out to an amazing Pacific Coast beach. Once again, we break a few things, but it ended up being worth it. Perfect uncrowded waves and $3 lobsters. <laughs>